morning. We are excited to have another episode of Let's Get Cooking with Chef Tom. This uh, episode is going to be Everything is Pumpkin. So what does that mean? You'll have to stay tuned to watch it. Uh, please know that Chef Tom has been working around the clock to bring something special to you all. We know that it is the month of October and we know that you have the trick or treat, you have people that carve out pumpkins. And so we're excited to see what Chef Tom is gonna bring today. And I also have some really good news. Um, we're gonna work on it, but Chef Tom will actually have his own YouTube page. So you'll be able to find all of his videos, all of his recipes there. So you don't wanna miss it. Again, it's going to be exciting. We're working on his own YouTube page. So we're hoping at the next session, we can give you all the link. So going forward, if you do miss the episodes, you can go right to his YouTube page and catch all of his videos, all of his recipes. So I am going to turn it over to no other than Chef Tom. We ask that if you can stay hanging there with us again, and then following this, he will send the recipe. So if you have any recipes also that you would like us to maybe bring to you, we are open to ideas and suggestions. You can drop them in the comment box. And so now I... Cindy, I'm so sorry. I think you might be muted. Uh, got it. So I would like to turn it over to Chef Tom. So I know we can't give him a round of applause in person, but let's give it to him anyway, just going like this. <laughs> Chef Tom, we are excited for today's session. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Let's Get Cooking with Chef Tom. Today, I have a helper with me. This is Chef Steve. If you've ever been in the Chef's Apprentice, he's he's uh, my number two, and uh, he's going to come here now. Where he's he's going to help with some of the recipes today. And um, so today's episode is about everything pumpkin. So I went online, and you know, it's a crazy amount of stuff that's in the grocery store that has the word pumpkin in it. I mean, think about it. It used to be pumpkin was only pumpkin pie. Well, now pumpkin spice has taken over the world. We're going to talk a little bit about pumpkin spice and what's in it and how you can make your own because you probably have all the stuff in your spice drawer to begin with that you don't have to go buy the little container. But think about all the things pumpkin is nowadays. There's beer that's pumpkin. There's liquor that's pumpkin. There's probably six or seven different cereals that are pumpkin spice. There's pumpkin spice creamers. There's pumpkin desserts. There's savory pumpkin. And we're going to do some of that today, too. So everything's pumpkin. And if you look at the little picture I have on here, you can see all the different kinds of pumpkins. And I have back here different versions of pumpkins. Because right now, pumpkins are, you can get most of them at most places, probably for $5 or less. And the bigger pumpkins, of course, are called face pumpkins. And then there's neck pumpkins for pies. And then these are pie pumpkins, too. So it just goes on and on. But what a great fall vegetable. And um, we like to do a lot of different things with it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is pumpkin spice. What's all the craze about pumpkin spice? Well, what is pumpkin spice? Is it something that grows on a plant? Actually, pumpkin spice is five different kinds of spices. And I have here the whole versions of the spices. So we have whole cloves, whole nutmeg. Cinnamon sticks, allspice, and then ginger, right? This is ginger root. So then you have the ground version of the spice, which is ground nutmeg, ground allspice, of course, ground ginger, ground cloves, and ground cinnamon. Now, cinnamon comes from different parts of the world. They say Vietnamese cinnamon is some of the best. So this is an example of all the different spices put together. So I do three parts cinnamon to two parts nutmeg, two parts allspice, one part clove, and two parts ginger. So when I say parts, so if you would make a teaspoon would be a part, you would multiply and that's how you would make your own blend. So probably most of you have these already in your spice drawer and you don't have to go buy this. Okay, because this is just a blend of that. So we're gonna blend this together to make our spice blend. Now you could get kind of fancy if you wanted to and you could toast some of these spices to bring out some different more aroma, some of the oils. 
So it's all put together. And the first dish we're going to make today is pumpkin spice chicken wings. Who doesn't like chicken wings? I know I do. And we're actually going to use some of this pumpkin spice that we're making right now in the flour that we're going to bread the wings in. So I actually did this recipe for a, a college wing contest for Tyson. And I came in in the top 15 in the country just with this recipe because they had never heard of it before. And I called it Wings of Harvest. Makes sense, right? Pumpkin harvest, pumpkin spice. So I'm going to put a generous amount of pumpkin spice into my flour here. And I'm going to have Chef Steve mix that together. And then we're going to toss the wings in the flour now and we're going to fry them. So some people don't bread their wings. It's OK. Some people fry them straight up as they are. I like to put a little bit of a coating on them. It kind of helps keep some of the juices in. And we're going to kind of look at this by color. And you know what? We might need a little bit more. We do. Because I'm thinking I want it to be a little I want to have some good seasoning. All right, there we go. Chef Steve's going to mix that up. And while he's doing that, I'm going to get started with the sauce. And the sauce is very easy. It's about six or seven different ingredients. I'm going to slide this down here. Chef Steve's going to take the wings. Now, I buy whole wings, and then I disjoin them. I just don't save the tip. So I have drums and flats here. I don't know whose favorite is what, but... I have two different daughters and it works out good because one really likes the drums and one really likes the flats and nobody fights over them. Couldn't get any better than that. So I'm gonna melt a quarter stick of whole butter in my skillet here. And I have some diced onions and this is actually my wing sauce recipe. It's the one we use here at the Chef's Apprentice and uh, it's very popular. Chef Tom, while you're doing that, I'm just curious for the participants that's on the line, if you love the flats versus the drums, drop it in the chat. I want to take a quick survey. Sounds good. What's your favorite, Cindy? I love chicken all together, so I eat everything, including the bones. <laughs> but if I had to choose, definitely the flats. Yeah, I, I like them both, but the flats... Uh, they go a little quicker. You can eat a few few more of them than the drums. I think the drums are a little chewy sometimes. So, all right, so we're gonna get our butter melted. We're gonna add our onion. And we're just gonna saute this until it's translucent, which isn't take, gonna take very long. And translucent just means like kind of transparent. All right, Chef Steve's got the wings going. He's gonna take care of frying them up. So if you'll be able to see him over my shoulder. So if he does anything wrong, don't let me know. No, it's all good. Chef Steve knows exactly what he's doing. So while, while he has his back turned, I'm going to season this with just a little salt and pepper. Because you always got to put a little bit of salt and pepper in your flour. So Chef Steve, you, while you weren't looking, I put some salt and pepper in there. All right. Okay. Sounds like a plan. All right. So we're going to saute our onions up. And what I have here is some Tabasco, some brown sugar, some barbecue sauce. I use Open Pit. This is not a promotion for Open Pit. It's just one that I started the recipe with. And I like the way it comes out. It's a little more tart. And I'm adding sugar to it, so I want a sauce that's a little more tart. And I have some cayenne pepper. And these are the, like the five or six ingredients. And all we really got to do is get our onions cooked and we're going to let our sauce simmer. So in goes our Worcestershire. I want to thank the, the people from IT again. We actually are there increasing in numbers, and I think it's the food. I'm not sure, but I hope that's the reason. So Pete, Chris, and Chris are here from IT, and uh, it's becoming a very professional setting. It's exciting. This is cayenne. And cayenne is what's really going to make your heat. You put in as much as you want or as little as you want. Now we have butter, right? So we're going to put in some brown sugar. So while I do that, I 
Oh, I hear those wings are frying now. We're going to melt this up and break up the brown sugar and get it to blend together with the butter. How's it smell out there, guys? They're nodding their heads. Okay, it's a good sign. All right, so we're going to blend this together. And it starts to get a shine. And it's almost like it's making a sticky caramel sauce. And it kind of is. That's what kind of puts it together. And our last ingredient is some barbecue sauce. Now, on the average, in a 350-degree fryer, those wings take about four to five minutes. Because you remember, we're starting with raw. There are wing products out there that are breaded that are already cooked and they're okay, but they're not near as juicy as frying up a fresh wing. And this is an amazing what wings can cost. Wait till Super Bowl Sunday to see what wings can cost. It's crazy. All right, that's simmering away. All right, so real quick, my sauce for this is a very different sauce. It's called an apple ranch crema. And it's basically applesauce, sour cream, and ranch dressing. And it's a different, and, and I don't mean ranch dressing, pardon me, I mean ranch seasoning. So it's a different kind of product than you will normally see. But it makes sense. It kind of goes with the whole spice thing of the pumpkin spice and... And we're just going to put some of that in there. It's about what a packet would be. They sell this now in a store in bulk where you, the packets are, you know, they're not, they're not inexpensive. And then our sour cream. I need a whip, Chef. Is there one in there? All right, so we're going to blend this together. Chef Steve's gonna run and get me a whip so that I make sure it mixes up real well. And our sauce is simmering. And basically, the longer you let it simmer, the stronger it gets, so don't let it simmer too long. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to put together. Thank you. And then we're just gonna mix this up. And this is kind of our harvest type sauce to go with our wings instead of traditional ranch dressing. And I actually learned this combination years ago. I worked in a restaurant where they made a sauce for prime rib where it was sour cream, horseradish, and applesauce. And it was, I don't know the ratio, two, two, one, I think. And people loved it. They wanted to know what was in it. And it was three ingredients. So as soon as Chef Steve lets me know, I'm also gonna just because of what they are. Put just a little bit of this pumpkin spice seasoning in our sauce so it really comes out. Because that's our goal. All right, so while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna turn that down. I'm gonna start on our soup today. So our soup, is a vegan soup and it's a pumpkin Thai curry soup. And so I always like to try to do a vegan recipe if I can. So we're gonna start off with a little bit of oil. And what makes it vegan is the cream I'm gonna use in it is coconut milk. So Thai, you gotta have some type of coconut milk. So we're gonna get that hot. And I have a little bit of canola oil. I'm going to saute my onions just to get them started. Now, there's a lot of aromatics in this soup. And what I mean by aromatics are different spices that make, that kind of bring out the flavor. So I'm going to pull this off to the side just so you can see what I'm doing. One of the aromatics is ginger. And everybody always says, I like ginger, but I just don't like working with it because it's hard to work with. 
how do you what do you use a vegetable peeler you know what the best way to peel ginger is the back of a spoon and this is actually just a tablespoon all i want to do is get the skin off of there okay and then i'm going to chop it up but it's just the easiest way because you can get around all the little nooks and crannies I'm going to chop this up with my garlic. Okay, those are good to go. And fresh ginger goes a long way and it doesn't cost much. All right, got something going on here. I'm gonna switch burners. All right, and I also have some lemongrass because if you're gonna make Thai, you gotta have lemongrass. All right, Chef, you got your wings right here. Wings are ready? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm gonna turn this over to Chef Steve. And Chef Steve's going to toss those in our sauce. The best way to toss them is in a bowl. That's how you do it in a large amount. Steve, I need a soup pot. This isn't working. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to plate these up. And Chef Tom, we had a question. What can you use in place of garlic if you're not really a fan of it? Mm, there really is no substitute for garlic. Um, just admit it. Just don't put it in there if you're not a fan of it, if you don't like it, because garlic can take over things. Um, and if just not something that you're a fan of, um, even even like the, the manufactured garlics, like garlic powder, garlic salt, they're all going to put that in there. And garlic's very good for you, but I understand if you don't like it, it it's an understood thing. Yes. Thank you. There you go. All right. Switching pots. Okay, because it's an induction burner, it has to have a steel pot. I thought this worked the last time. So I'm gonna steal some of Chef Steve's garlic here. We're gonna move this over to here. Okay. All right, Chef Steve's gonna plate up the wings. While he does that, I'm going to chop this up together so that our aromatics get going. Now, you could if you wanted to. I just kind of want to show you how to do it. Chop this up ahead of time. Get all your mise en place ready. Now, the finer you chop it, the more flavor comes out. There we go. Now we're cooking. I'm Smell gonna put my lemongrass in, yep. Basically wanna kinda of get this started and get the, all the aromatics put together. So some of the other ingredients, this is a red curry paste. All right, we're gonna use some of that. Of course, canned pumpkin, veggie stock, coconut milk, and lime juice. All right, put our curry paste in. Curry paste you can get um, at the grocery store, probably more of an upscale grocery store, like a Wegmans. Oh man, smell that. I'll show that if you want to present. Thanks. Okay. We have a question. If you don't have a deep fryer, is baking the wings an option? 
can bake the wings, absolutely. And what you would want to do there is um, you don't have to bread them. You can just season them. But um, yes, it can be a healthy version of the wings. Awesome. And add our veggie stock. And actually a trick, believe it or not, uh, that some restaurants use, imagine that, is they will flour the wings lightly and then bake them to get them started so that they are kind of cooked already and then they flash them in the fryer. But as far I need a small dish. All right, so we got our veggie stock in there and I'm gonna put some of our canned pumpkin in. Now, canned pumpkin is like, there's not gonna be a thickener in this because this is kind of gonna be our thickener because it's pureed pumpkin. So it's gonna blend in here and give this soup some body. And whenever you pick this up or you, you, you wanna make this or make any of these recipes, make sure you get the 100% Pure pumpkin, not the pumpkin pie filling, because there's a difference. All right. So that's actually coming together very nicely. Mmm, smelling good too. Now anything Thai, as you know, is gonna have some heat. All right, so we're gonna get that, bring that up to a boil. And then our last thing is going to go in is going to be coconut milk. So there's different types of coconut milk at the grocery store. There's light coconut milk, which is basically watered down coconut milk. There's coconut milk. And then there's a product called cream of coconut, which has a lot of oil and sugar in it. You don't want that. That is actually what they use to make margarita mix. Or I'm sorry, pina colada mix. There we go. So our sauce. This is our dipping sauce for our wings. I'm gonna kind of sneak that into the corner right there. Thank you, Chef Steve. You're welcome. It's good to have a helper. You know, if you forget something, you gotta run around like a crazy person. So Steve and I work very well together. That's why we had a good restaurant. All right, so this is cooking along here. Gonna add some coconut milk you'll see it comes out kind of thick and that's okay because that's all the good stuff I'm gonna let that kind of heat up and simmer mmm Smells good, Chef. It sure does. Now, I'd like it to be a little thicker, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let it reduce just a little bit. So while we're doing that, I'm going to clean up our station. And Chef Steve is going to make a recipe today. And what he's going to make is pumpkin hummus. Thank you, Chef. You're welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm gonna make pumpkin hummus. Uh, hummus comes in a bunch of different varieties. Um, you can do, there's different ones. You could do roasted garlic hummus. You could do black bean hummus. Um, the kind of beans we're using today are garbanzo beans. Um, some people also call them chickpeas. Uh, we also can make them out of Northern beans and like black beans, like I mentioned before. So what we're gonna do first is I have my garbanzo beans here. I have about a couple, uh, two cups of garbanzo beans. Uh, I drained them and rinsed them because they sit in a liquid. You don't want that liquid to just add a bad flavor to your hummus that you, <clears throat> that's a little uh, unwanted. So I'm gonna place these in the food processor. 
The easiest way to make hummus is in the food processor. Uh, I have seen it done in the blender before, but the only problem with the blender is it gets too gummy. Uh, in a food processor, you have a lot more room for your liquids and it makes it a lot easier to work with. <clears throat> Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. My, my personal favorite hummus, like I said, is roasted garlic. So what you could do is you could roast garlic in a little bit of oil and then you extract that oil and keep that garlic and you throw it in and then you could also use that roasted garlic oil to make your hummus. Something else we're gonna add is a, a little thing called tahini. If you don't know what tahini is, tahini is a, it's a sesame seed puree. It's very traditional and, and, and a, lot of, a lot of hummus recipes. If you don't have it at home, it's not a big deal. All right, set that off to the side. Next, I'm gonna add half a lemon. All you gotta do is cut that guy in half. Take the lemon. And you always wanna strain it over something because lemons have seeds in it. It's, and it doesn't add a good preference to your, uh, to your hummus. So you're gonna squeeze that guy right over top. Catch all those seeds. It also catches any of the pulp that falls out. We'll try it, we'll start with half of it. We might need to add some more. Okay, put that in there just like so. All right. What I'm gonna do now is put the lid on the food processor. And what I normally do is I start by pulsing it first. It just breaks it up a little bit. And then this allows me to add my oil. We're using olive oil today. We can, you could use any, any kind of oil. Uh, olive oil is preferred. It has the best flavor profile. So let's throw that in there. Start, let that go and see what happens. As it mixes, it'll incorporate all that oil and it's okay if you add it while it's moving or while it's on or when it's off. It doesn't, either one does not matter. So as it continues to blend, you could add more oil if you want it thinner or if you want it a little thicker, you could add less. It's, it's, all, it's all in preference. I'm gonna add just a little bit more oil as it's just a little too thick for my liking. All right, it's looking good. Something else I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. Not much, just a little. And I'm also gonna add, this one I'm gonna add in our pumpkin. Pumpkin adds a very nice flavor profile. It's very good for the time of year. It's very seasonable. Mix that in, let's see how it looks. And it'll give it a slight orange tinge. All right. Add just a little touch more. Chef Steve, here's some of our homemade pumpkin spice yes, too. Yes, that would, that would be great in there as well. Sprinkle some of that in. Smelling good so far, guys. Gonna keep on mixing it and make sure everything's all incorporated. You know, you could display this in a regular dish or today we're gonna display it in a pumpkin. So what we did is we, we cut off the top of the pumpkin and then we hollowed out the inside. And then we, we, we put the, the lid right off to the side of it. So what we're gonna do, oh, this looks really good. Chef, what do you think? I don't know, how's it taste? The spoon. Tastes really good, really good. 
Very good. All right. So at this stage, we're going to put the hummus in the pumpkin. And this, this presents very, very well on, on a silver platter, just like we have here. So what we're going to do put it in just like so. Just going to put a little bit more in there. There we go. So this is what it'll look like with it full, OK? Now, and then I also toasted some pita chips. So what I did is I cut them in little triangles. What I did is I sprayed them with Pam spray. Oil gets to be too sat it saturates them. It saturates it too much. And it just doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a very good product. So you can spray them with Pam spray. And then I just put a little bit of salt and pepper on them to taste. And then I'm just spreading them right around the tray. Looks good, Chef Steve. Maybe a dusting of your seasoning on top of your hummus? Yes, sir. Ah, that looks like a pumpkin pie in a pumpkin. No, it's not. It's pumpkin hummus. All right. That looks great. All right. Very nice. Okay. So the last recipe we're going to do is actually a pumpkin pizza. I know what you're thinking. Pizza. But yes. So actually, um, Chef Steve and I are going to collaborate on this. But uh, these are dough balls that I, uh, I'm going to say the store, the Weiss store, uh, sells them in a, the, over by the deli section. And they're very reasonably priced. I use the same dough ball to do this. So basically what I'm doing is I'm like prepping my crust ahead of time to kind of save some cooking time. All right. And I have a pizza screen here. Now, you can get these at the restaurant store. They're very inexpensive, but they don't cost much. If you have a stone, a stone is even better, but not everybody has a stone. So, and stones can be quite expensive. So what I wanna do is kind of fit that on my screen and don't worry about your pizza being round. A real pizza isn't round anyway. So, and this is called a docker, but if you didn't have a docker, basically what it's got is a bunch of spikes in it. And what it does is it keeps the dough from bubbling up. And I'm gonna just kind of make, but before I do that, I'm just gonna trim some of the excess dough off. Just so it's all the same thickness all the way around. Like that. Chef Steve is preparing uh, brown butter apples for our pizza. And how he's doing that is taking whole butter and putting it in a saute pan until it becomes brown butter. And then he's going to uh, saute the apples in it and put some fresh sage with it. So to make our crust, this is kind of a thumb finger type action, but you kind of fold it over to try to give it a braided look. This works much better with the dough we make here at the restaurant than this, but it is what it is. But it kind of gives it a, a more finished look. And all I did was paint the edges with a little bit of water so the dough would stick. We're gonna go all the way around. We have a lady that works here at the college named Chris Levitsky. She does our pizzas and she does so many of these, she can do them blindfolded. And she actually did them one time in front of me with her eyes closed. That's how good she was, or still is actually. So I'm gonna fire this off in here. That's gonna take about six, seven, eight minutes. Uh, my oven is about 475 degrees. It's a deck oven, so it's top and bottom. But this is kind of what the finished product looks like. So what I have here is canned pumpkin, some of our homemade pumpkin spice, and ricotta cheese. 
and I blended that together to make my base. I'm going to spread that on my dough. Now, I've found one of the best ways to spread is a thing that we have, and you can get them, is it's called a spoodle. And basically, it just helps to spread it out. You don't want to get it on the crust. Okay, you want to just get it on the bottom of the dough. You want to make sure it's even all the way around. I hear the apples going in. We want to make sure we have a nice even layer. Now this is a great way to add fiber to the pizza, vitamin A. Okay, so there we go. And then this is just your basic pizza sauce. And I'm just going to zigzag some of this across the top in different spots. I don't want it in all one spot. And I know what you're thinking, pumpkin and tomato, but actually pumpkin and tomato goes together brilliantly. Pumpkin, chicken, chili, think about it. Okay, we do it here at the restaurant. Pumpkin lasagna is made with tomato sauce and pureed pumpkin. So it's a good blend together. And if you're not a fan of pumpkin, you could use butternut squash. All right, so we got some of our red sauce in there. I'm gonna start with a base of some mozzarella cheese. How we doing, chef? Looks pretty good. Okay, can you give me a slotted spoon, please? Sure can. Okay, only because I don't want all the butter on my pizza, I want the flavor of the butter. All right. So we'll put our mozzarella down. Our next ingredient is going to be sausage. Now, I have Italian sausage here. You could use breakfast sausage. You could use the maple links, which would be a great combination, right, to go on top of that because the maple, the pumpkin, the spices, all that kind of stuff. We're just going to liberally put some of that down. Do you have any more of that fresh sage for me, Chef Steve? You have a little bit. I just want a little bit on top of the pizza. All right, and now some of our brown butter apples. Oh, they smell good. We're just gonna sprinkle some of them down. I'm going to check my crust. Up, oh, perfect. Want that chopped a little bit? Yes, please. So there we go. Now that's part cooked. I'm going to let it cool down before I try to take it off the screen. All right, so I'm going to come up with a little bit more mozzarella just to cover up some of the garnish so it kind of blends in. And then I'm coming in with Parmesan. Parmesan has a different flavor. It's a little saltier. And then Chef Steve's going to sprinkle some fresh sage on there. All right. I think we made something new. I think so. That's always the fun part. All right, so this is gonna take about eh, six, seven minutes because the dough's already cooked. It's really a matter of getting it uh, started and getting it hot. So what I do with this kind of oven, it's a deck oven. If you have a stone, um, I use these screens in my oven at home. I have a convection wall oven. And once I have the dough, and it's starting to crisp on the bottom, a whole theory around it. But once I know that it's starting where I want it, I slide it right off and put it right on the oven rack. 
and it's ready to go. And then I use the screen to get it out of there. So um, we're gonna let that go for a couple minutes. Are there any questions so far? Yeah, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Okay. Chef Steve's gonna guard the pizza mm -hmm. and I'm gonna come over here and finish the soup. All right, looking good. Smells good. Last thing to go in the soup is a little bit of lime. Okay. I actually, I have a question, uh, Chef Tom. I know that you put sausage on the pizza. Is there any reason that you chose that particular topping? Do other meats work well? It's also? just because sausage kind of goes with apples and it's kind of the apples and sage and it's kind of all that blend of flavor. You wouldn't have to, if you wouldn't even have to put any meat on it if you didn't want to. Um, you could keep it meatless. You could do uh, smoked tam, would be fine. Um, awesome. It's really, you know, that thing with creating peaches, it's all about a personal preference. Um, but I just thought for the, for the fall, uh, like pumpkin stuffing, apple stuffing has kind of sausage, sage, that it was just a good combination. You know, it looks great. And well, we also we have a question from Dave. Uh, he says, for the wing sauce, do you use dark or light brown sugar? I use light brown sugar. Dark brown sugar has a little more molasses in it. That's why it's dark brown sugar. So, but if you had, but if you didn't have light and you had to use dark, I've done it before. It just gives it a darker color, a little bit more of a, of a sweeter flavor. I think molasses has almost like a smoky taste a little bit. Okay, our soup oh, looks great. So we're gonna present our soup. All right. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could put this in a blender or use an immersion blender to make a pure puree if that's what you wanted. Uh, you don't have to. I'm going to dice up a little bit of chili as a garnish. Not that it's not hot enough, but Hey, it is Thai. All right. How's the pizza coming, Jeff? Coming good. We just took it off the screen. Just took it off the screen. Okay. So what he did there was we start off on the screen. Because the screen is a barrier between the oven floor, or would be your stone, and the pizza dough, once we're about a third of the, or two-thirds of the way through, we take it off the screen and put it directly on the bottom of the oven so the heat comes up and crisps the shell. Because it can look done on top, but if the bottom is kind of blonde, is how I describe it, it needs to have, it needs, you need to be able to pick it up and eat it. So you have to have enough texture. All right, so he's spinning the pizza. That's the other thing. Every oven has a little bit of a hot spot. So you want to make sure that Wherever it's at, know your know your tools, know your equipment. Okay. All right, so it's coming along looking good. And our last tip is once the pizza comes out, we can paint the, the crust with a little bit of olive oil and it kind of gives it a little bit of uh, shine to the crust and it keeps it from uh, looking dry because you gotta remember there's a little bit of flour there so, Chef, I'm going to get you some olive oil. Sounds good. Uh, actually, Chef, I think we have some up top from my hummus last time. Ah, time. awesome. I knew so I had that. Just need a brush. There you go, right there. Just need a brush. There's a brush. All right. Okay, perfect. So, we're almost done. So, take the time to enjoy. Uh, once you get the recipes, if you're interested in them, we'll send them out. But to try to do something different and 
Pumpkin is a seasonal thing. Yeah, you have canned pumpkin all year. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, there's it's just like a certain time. Like, I don't want to eat pumpkin pie in the summer. I just don't. It's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's kind of ingrained in us that it's kind of a fall thing. And that's when a lot of places are making them and selling them because that's kind of what we're used to. So. All right, Chef Tom. All right. Pizza just came out. We got a plate up here for display. So Chef Steve's going to paint the crust just a little bit, just to give it a shine. And then we're going to cut it. So I always say I cut it into six pieces because I can't eat eight. I don't know if anybody got that or not, but. Nice, nice crunch when you cut it. Yep. All right. It smells really good. And there's our pizza. We'll fix that. Now, if you wanted to, you could serve red sauce on the side or pizza sauce. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Looks good. So does anybody have any more questions? We had a question from Linda just asking if we could do a close-up of the finished food, and it looks like they might be doing that right now, actually. Um, and if anyone has any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Right, that's oh, that's our... perfect. Yep, Chef, if you can do that, that's excellent. Maybe just lift the plate up a little higher for us. That's awesome. There we go. There's our soup. I can't tilt this because it's soup, but you just have to taste, trust me on this one. And then our wings. And then our hummus. That all looks awesome. Thank you again, Chef Tom and Chef Oh, Steve. it's our pleasure. Our pleasure. And thanks, Chef Steve, for coming on and helping today. So it was great. Um, uh, our next one is going to be, uh, we're going to start focusing on the holidays. Now, I don't know exact date, but I believe it's the first Thursday in November. Um, so, but we're going to start focusing on some of the holiday recipes coming up. So they won't just be, of course, not just pumpkin, but what's the next holiday coming up? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So everybody, you know, being a chef for a long time, uh, if I wear my chef coat and I go into a grocery store at Thanksgiving time, somebody always stops me and says, how long do I cook my turkey? <laughs> it never fails. So, because um, it's always the main question, like you're the Butterball hotline, but it is what it is. I, I'm honored to be asked. That's how I look at it. Um, but there's always a lot of questions and there's a lot of variations and a lot of families have different uh, things that they like to do. Uh, so we're going to talk about all that. So thanks for joining us. And uh, we hope to see time. you next time on Let's Get Cooking with Chef Tom. Yes. And the next event, in case you all missed it, the next event will be November 12th. November 12th. And again, look out for Chef Tom um, YouTube page. We will be launching that very, very, very soon where you can find all of his videos. So exciting things are coming. There's some other great news coming, but we don't want to share it just yet. So you have to keep logging on to see what's coming next. Thank you all again for joining us. Thank you, chefs. We appreciate you all. Our Goodbye, pleasure. everyone. Thank you. Excellent show today, guys. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Great turnout. Thank you.